Now it's time to jump right into our judges. Starting with Team 8, I'd like Parker to kick it off. Sure, thanks. Uh, so we'll start with Team 8, and uh, this design had a, some really interesting parts. Part of it looked really familiar. Uh, it seemed like the uh, design, my cat's in the way, sorry, is uh, inspired or, uh, or maybe even more than inspired by 971's power-up robot. Uh, the rest of the cat, unfortunately, looked uh, very unfinished, um, and, and there were some good concepts there, but um, otherwise not a lot that I could judge on. Absolutely. Moving on to Team 261. All right, so 261 had, the, to me, their robot was very vague in their mechanics, and they didn't exactly provide a lot. They pr provided some basic aspects, like a good drivetrain, and, uh, but, uh, oh, wait, was it the, wait a minute, was it the dozer bot, or? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> okay, so. I, I I got the numbers mixed up. My bad. The dozer bot. Uh, yeah, it was a dozer bot, and it I didn't see except for a drivetrain. There weren't any like mechanics that would result in a functioning robot that could shoot the balls into the into their respective slots. All right, yeah, I mean, it did have a small shooter in it, but I'm not sure how much it works, but you got to give them uh, definitely some yeah. points or style on that one. I mean, man, <laughs> does it look pretty cool. It was fun to cut away and reveal a functioning robot underneath the dozer. <laughs> All right. There. Now I think it's time to move to Team 264. So Team 264, they so their step model was missing a few important things. They seem to be missing a lot of wheels and gearboxes and electronics but they have a great design their intake is it's nice and simple and they're able to do ornaments in all three levels definitely and uh, 264 came in at ranked 33 that moves us to team 270 <laughs> 270 was fun. Um, this robot uh, is a enormous hopper to hold and shoot ornaments. Um, something some, something tells me that they did not read rule G16, which <laughs> limits possession to three ornaments because their scouting sheet was more was felt like they just wanted to load up a ton of ornaments and then shoot them in one big cycle. So, however, the robot <laughs> was very good um the the detail was there and the shooter concept was there and i feel like even if they were only allowed to hold three ornaments the design still held up it was great but the the concept was was based off of a, a kind of flawed notion of the rules yeah so we should probably read the rules next time guys but overall it was still a pretty good robot <laughs> that moves us to team 272 all right uh 272 i when i was judging this i personally felt they should have been higher on the list because like their robot was described as a defense bot slash very low scoring uh, ornament bot. Now I feel like with what they designed and what they felt they laid out and what the robot could do, they did it very effectively. There are a bunch of teams that go to worlds because they're not necessarily good at doing everything and the best of the best but they're good at doing the small things i felt that this robot really accomplished that definitely um and 272 came out with rank 37 that moves us to team 278 so team 278 they were ranked 43rd and they their robot it was a primary present robot and it had a small arm with a degree of freedom that I don't really find necessary. And it reminded me a lot of the small switch bots, some of them from this year, like 5499 and 6377. Definitely. I think they might have stolen uh, 2869's CAD for this one, but overall, a good effort. That moves us um, to Team 294. 294 was uh, was another interesting one. Um, it showed a really promising concept. One thing that I liked is that they uh, demonstrated a turret shooter that also had a vision alignment system catted into their robot, which very few other teams did, and I felt would be very important. Um, so, so 
props on them for putting vision in. Um, the the intake and elevator was. Uh, to the score but the concept was solid and the the drive base was also good um, and and I like the vision and uh, that brought team 294 to rank 36 that moves us to team 300 now team 300 when I saw their cad uh, it looked very very crude to me like some of the some of the parts I did not see any like working mechanisms on there and I didn't see like, okay, how does this link to that? And plus with their shooter feeder, it could the time, so much time in shooting it. Definitely. And that earns team 300, the 40th rank that moves us to team 301. So Team 301 had an intake and shooter, and there were, I think they said there were 35 wheels on it, which, that's a lot of wheels. <laughs> and everything just seems like it would work well, and something they put in their scouting sheet was, he can't carry the star because he is the star, which... <laughs> <laughs> Points for that, right? Yeah. And, uh, yep, and that earned Team 301 the 31st rank. Yeah, so um, if I would have to go back to 301, uh, actually, Griffin, or uh, rather, Colton, you have it up on your screen. Do you have any more comments yeah. about 301? So, well, if there was, I looked and there were some electronics missing. Okay. But otherwise, their present intake was good because it would, it had like a little scoop and it would suck them in. Okay. Kind of, kind of like some 2017 floor gear it's grabbers. Yeah, no, and it's uh, awesome that they were able to do both ornaments uh, as well as presents. That's going to move us to Team 302. Um, 302 had a uh, had a, a kind of simple CAD, but the real standout portion was that there was this large, swoopy surface, maybe even surface modeled or at least swept, um, combined shooter, shroud, and ball track and intake um, ramp, I guess. It's really hard to describe. It's this big swoopy thing that um, looks really good and, and, and actually some, some skill went into catting that. That, that is uh, definitely for sure. But I have no clue how that would actually be built and it would certainly not be strong without any kind of supports. Like, it, especially within the context of FRC, even on a professional level, that is a very complex shape to build in one piece. Um, and, and would be, I'd say, almost impossible to manufacture. So while it's a cool concept, and it does have a shooter, which could potentially work, just the core of the robot and that big swoopy thing is, is it, it wor works in CAD, but, but that's it. Yeah, my, my Katia professor would be proud, but I'm not sure how well to do on an FRC field. That's going to move us to Team 302, or rather 305. All right, so for 305... Their CAD was was relatively good and a very creative thing, but when we saw their scouting sheet, it had literally three sentences on it. They did not follow the template whatsoever and had, uh, and it felt like they just gave up and had to, like short term or uh, short term on the fly, just write something down. Now, for for the, their CAD was pretty interesting in that. Uh, I the shooter looked imp the shooter and intake look relatively nice, but again, it you can't. Part of the challenge was to do the scouting sheet. Yeah, mm -hmm. no. So I mean, documenting is definitely important, uh, especially when you go to talk to other teams about you know your robot. You have to have a good set of documentation, some pictures, maybe. Um, I know a lot of teams they'll make uh, engineering binders, especially like. 254 does a really good job of that um and you know the scouting report while we do it is so that judges have an idea of how your robot works because you can look at a robot and you know all of us have a, a fairly good mechanical set of knowledge but you don't always know what you know what was attended there especially if cad's unfinished so the scouting report is very important and something that you know teams should definitely think about even during their, their real season and that earned team 305 the 35th rank it's going to move us to team 311 so Team 311, their team name was CAD, Dad, and Sons. <laughs> and 
their robot was named the Fam Squad. And they had a very neat swerve drive. And there, there's a lot of detail in it. There's The star mechanism seems like it could drop the star and it might have trouble grabbing onto it. And yeah, I said it's a scary star scoring mechanism. You know, that definitely looks pretty complex to uh, to control. So hopefully they have some good programmers. Um, and that RMT 311, the 42nd rank. That's going to move us to team 313. 313 at the start um, looked, looked pretty interesting. It's um, another kind of... the, the uh, You're going to see a lot of robots that are like this that are just a horizontal hopper, maybe on a tilt axis on an elevator. And this is one of those teams. However, this one uh, lacked a lot of the CAD detail of other teams. Um, didn't have a lot of fasteners, didn't have gussets. Um, it had a cube intake, which was pretty you know, power up cube intake. Um, one, a few details though, is that they had this kind of funnel on the back of their robot that didn't seem like it would hold the ornaments very well when intaking. Um, and also for the, uh, actually kind of expelling of the ornaments into the tree, they used, uh, Colson's, which are very rigid wheels. And I'm not sure they appreciated that the game elements themselves are also, uh, rigid and and you don't really get any compression with Colson's and so that would probably jam right away unless it was very very finely tuned. Um, the elevator was decent, the intake was decent, the drive base uh, w- w- was there, um, but the scoring had a few kind of oversights in it. I felt, but overall not bad. Yep, and that earned them a rank just outside the top thirty at thirty two. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. 